Hello, I'm Richard Toy and I want to talk to you today about whether or not Boris Johnson's now notorious Peppa Pig speech was the worst prime ministerial speech ever. Uh, he kind of rambled about Peppa Pig world, he lost his place, it was pretty bizarre. But have people done worse in the past? Well, I suppose our minds might flip back just a few years to Theresa May's notorious conference speech where she was handed a P45 as a joke by uh, a comedian. Uh, she had a terrible cough, she couldn't speak, the, the letters fell off the wall. Um, that was pretty bad. We might then go back to James Callaghan in 1978, not actually a speech, but a press conference, a very famous press conference, where he returned from a summit in Guadeloupe uh, at the time of the so-called winter of discontent when there was strikes and industrial unrest. And he uh, said you know, very complacently, I don't think people in the outside world would agree that there is mounting, mounting chaos. Um, people in Britain, of course, uh, many of them felt rather differently. Um, and this was the press conference which The Sun notoriously headlined uh, crisis, what crisis? Callaghan didn't actually use that word, those words, um, but he gave that general impression. And then we might go back as well to 1940 and Neville Chamberlain's speech in the Norway debate after the uh, British invasion of Norway had gone extremely badly wrong and the German invasion, uh, by contrast, of Norway had been very successful. Um, and so uh, Chamberlain's mistake there, one of his most notorious phrases, was when he appealed to his friends in the House. And I do have friends in the House, he said. And this was felt by many to be a party political appeal rather than a kind of national appeal which would have been more appropriate and this uh, there were many circumstances of course it wasn't only his um, mistake in his speech which led to the, the, the collapse of his government um, but certainly it was a very significant moment so those are sort of three comparisons um, and you know were they worse than Boris Johnson's speech or not well I suppose in Theresa May's case we might say um, Actually, it was possibly even more painful and embarrassing uh, to watch them than, than Boris Johnson's at the CBI. Um, yet at the same time, uh, it wasn't her fault that this man had got through security and handed her a P45. It wasn't her fault that she had a cough, although maybe she should have thought about whether or not to go ahead with the speech under those conditions. And it wasn't her fault that the letters fell off the wall. Um, so, uh, you know, she was sort of doing her best in, in difficult circumstances, I suppose, we have, irrespective of what you, what you think of her politics. Um, Callaghan, I think it was a kind of an unforced error that he um, you should have read the situation uh, better um, and should have been able to strike um, a more appropriate note. Um, but I suppose he was trying to calm the situation down. He was, she was deploying a strategy which had been quite effective for him, um, his sort of uh, sort of confident, uh, calm demeanour, which just happened not to be a particularly good technique at this particular moment. Um, and Neville Chamberlain, well, um, you know, in a sense, the question is whether or not he could have turned that situation around. Um, and of course, I think that his problem was that he had, over the past few years, been very sort of hostile towards the Labour Party and contemptuous of the Labour Party. He hadn't uh, reached out uh, to their leaders and um, particularly in wartime that would have been an appropriate thing to do. So it was probably less his speech that was responsible rather than a series of circumstances and indeed a series of very effective speeches by other people um, which, which brought about his downfall. Um, so I guess there are reasons for saying that all those other speeches had some elements which were um, you know, worse than, than Boris Johnson's. Um, you could well say that um, Neville Chamberlain's was a, a worse speech because it was a, a greater moment of national crisis, and I suppose that could be true of, of Callaghan's as well. Um, but um, you know, so, so with Boris Johnson, there was nothing much particularly at stake in this CBI speech, with the possible exception of his own reputation. But I guess where I think that Johnson's speech was you know, far worse than these other ones is that uh, you know, whatever you think of the, you know, the views and opinions and, and policies of 
Neville Chamberlain, Jim Callaghan and Theresa May. They were actually all sincerely trying and what made Johnson's speech, I think, um, really stand out as a, as a sort of a low point was his fundamental contempt for the audience that he really just didn't seem to be bothering. So that although it may uh, by some measures not be the worst prime ministerial speech in history, um, in terms of uh, lack of effort and contempt for the audience, I would argue that it was.